So after months of campaigning and more than a week of early voting, it is primary day across New York State and here in our region. There has been a lot of focus on the Buffalo Common Council with several key races. There are Democratic primaries today for five of the nine seats. Three of them are incumbents running for re-election, but two of them are open seats. And that includes the Ellicott District, thanks to the retirement of Council President Darius Pridgen. He's been on the council for the past 12 years. And he joins me now live here in studio to talk about what's next for the Common Council on this election day. Reverend Pridgen, it's always great to see you. Uh, we dissolved your picture there out. But you said you were not, you're not doing a disappearing act. Um, tell me, and I, I don't want to, you know, polls are still open. I don't sure. want to influence anybody's Absolutely. vote. I'm sure you have a preference on who you'd like to see win a lot of these races today. But overall, I think what this tells us is the council is going to look very different a year from now than it does right now. Yeah. Uh, is, is that a good thing? Oh, I think it's always a good thing. You know, we have a democracy. Uh, people get to choose who they want to represent them. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. This is this is the way our government runs. What will be the most important issue or couple of issues that will face the next council? You know, I think the most important issue that we're hearing, especially on the east side of Buffalo in the poor communities, is about housing, is about the rents, um, especially as we see rents skyrocket, uh, and really looking for government to say, hey, we're the little guy out here, we need you to help, help us. Um, and so I think those are some of the most important things uh, that we, we've seen. Of course, infrastructure in different neighborhoods, and really ensuring that when we talk about gentrification, or the bringing up of an area uh, to a middle class standard that it does not outprice the people who need to stay, who want to stay. Yeah, but before I move on to the next question, I mean, th that seems to go with what the council decided today. We were just talking about the Bray Miller market decision. It was, you know, are we really going to spend this money? There are limited resources on something downtown that maybe has a, a, a better opportunity? Yeah, you know, this, this was not uh, a difficult vote for me. I really wanted to know the ins and outs and whether this business would be survivable. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think that people across this city, and especially in the areas where I represent, present have spoken loudly and clearly. We have food deserts um, in different areas. We just, you know, we've got one grocery store in our area. Maston District has no grocery yeah. stores. And f to say that we could not find businesses uh, to get rid, to not get rid, for, for 500,000 to be used, um, it didn't sit well enough with the council to say, yes, let's do it. And so a unanimous vote went forward that we thought that this was not the right thing to do with that money. We need to invest in small business. If you go to places like Toronto, and I know that's a different country, but still the, the, it works. Small business, small business, small business, large business. So in order, the feeling was for a grocery store to really make it, it or you know, a downtown, the grocery store doesn't grow downtown. Downtown has to grow, then the grocery store is able to grow. Yeah, the chicken and egg thing, right? Yeah, what, absolutely. What, what comes first. Um, back to the election yep. today. Um, so few people participate in these primaries, yes. and especially in these off-year elections. And the council races have always been in these off-year elections, yes. right? Every four years, it's 2023. Um, Unfortunately. How concerning is it that, I mean, it, this is a consequential thing. Even for our viewers right now, the majority of whom do not live in the city of Buffalo, mm -hmm. Buffalo government impacts you and affects Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And so few people will determine these races. Yeah, when you have a low turnout right now, um, it's being reported that uh, Maston, as of one o'clock, has 25% where the other districts had about 5%. Wow. And so at the end of the day, you're talking about a very small amount of people choosing who you want to represent you. Yep. And then people say, well, you know, it doesn't make a difference. Trust me, every single vote counts. And in these off years like this, when you're talking about how important the city of Buffalo is to the surrounding suburbs, but to the city of Buffalo. And if we're ever going to continue, if we are gonna to continue to grow, we have to have representation and the people have to know how important their vote is and to not just sit home and hope it gets done. Uh, I was watching the video feed earlier of the event that Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown had. I saw that, that you were there um, and he was asked about these rumors. I'm sure you've heard them because I've heard them from many different politicos in the city <laughs> that he may not serve out the rest of his term, that he may have another job lined up. Uh, I want to give the quote. The mayor said, my intention is to fill out my four year term, but you never say never. <laughs> um, he was very clear. I'm focused on being mayor. I'm excited to be mayor. I want to keep being mayor. Um, but if he were to leave early this year, you would become mayor because you are the council president. Um, yes. Is that a job you would want? 
Um, you know, I never say never. I knew what I signed up for when I became council president. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, you're here to serve the people and no matter what seat you're in. And I know that might sound, oh, that's really a political answer, but it's the truth. It's what mm -hmm. I've, how I've operated for 12 years. Uh, if the mayor left, a lot of people don't realize it's not the deputy mayor that becomes the mayor. Right. The common council president takes over the role of the mayor until there's a, a special election or election. Um, and so if the mayor left, I mean, I've heard the rumors too, trust me. <laughs> I've never heard anything concrete. The mayor has yeah. never called me and said, hey, you know, I'm leaving next week. Yeah. So every other week, I want you to know this, there's a new <laughs> rumor, um, and it's out there. I mean, it's been published. You know, the rumors of upstate, the rumors of different places. But to this moment, I have not had any concrete proof. But hearing that response, you never know. Yeah. Um, I've only got 30 seconds left. Okay. What's next for Council President Darius Pridgen? I mean, after November's election. Yeah. Um, well, January, I'm, I'm there January, till January, right. and what's next is I'm going to sleep in for like two weeks, and then, nice. then we'll see. <laughs> Maybe not have as many phone calls from Channel 2 asking you to come Absolutely. and talk about Absolutely. <laughs> Council President, good to see you. Thanks good for coming Good to be in. here. Appreciate it.